Hello, my name is Bernhard Zoom and I'm the Product Marketing Manager for the Statistics and Machine Learning Toolbox. I collaborated on this demo with Drew Halberstadt, Manager of the Apps team in the Machine Learning Toolbox. For quite a while now, you've been able to train and assess models, transform features using PCA, even automatically tune hyperparameters interactively inside the learner apps. However, some other commonly applied techniques still force you to leave the learner apps. Partition your data so you can evaluate your model on held out test data. Automatically rank features to avoid overhitting or reduce model size. And resume your session after performing additional steps outside the learner apps, such as taking steps towards deploying the model. Finally, the learner app still blocked your desktop session unless you had PCT. This video shows how we've closed these gaps in the context of building a condition model for monitoring manufacturing processes or industrial machinery. We have data from vibration sensors, three channels and distinguish two conditions. The data is the same as used for the anomaly detection demo that the predictive maintenance team published last summer. You may already be familiar. And there, they use the diagnostic feature designer to extract 12 features. And we are using those same 12 features in this demo. The model building workflow begins by loading the features into classification learner. In addition to choosing different ways of validating your model, you now can also set aside a percentage as test. Next, we'll train a bunch of models. Training all models would take a long time with this large data set. Instead, we select several, including a neural network, which were added in R2021A, in case you missed that. We train the models in parallel, since we have parallel computing toolbox and multiple cores available. To identify the best model, we can sort them by validation accuracy, and K-nearest neighbor and ensemble come out near the top. Next, let's assess the size of models to determine which ones are suitable for deployment on memory-limited hardware. We'll save the session since we need to do that work on the command line. To assess models further, we export them as compact models and then save them to disk. We can see that the k-nearest neighbor model is much larger than the ensemble. That's because the k-nearest neighbor needs to store the whole date training data set, which is more than 17k data points in this case. Let's go back to our model training session and explore whether we can build smaller models. Good that we saved our session so we don't have to start all over. We select features interactively by clicking feature selection in the tool strip and choose MRMR as one of the popular feature ranking methods available. Once features are ranked, select the top features or pick them individually like before. After apply and save, we retrain a couple models with a reduced feature set. Accuracy remained almost unchanged, which suggests there was a lot of redundance among the 12 original features. To further optimize the model, we can apply hyperparameter tuning. While we wait, due to the background pool, our MATLAB desktop session won't block, and we can revisit the size of these models. We see the ensemble just got a tad smaller, while the Gaussian SVM shrunk by a factor of 8. Now that hyperparameter tuning finished, we see it did not significantly improve accuracy. We can compare models side by side before making our final selection. Turns out the Gaussian SVM and Ensemble have almost identical accuracies. While the Gaussian SVM doesn't come up exactly at the top, it's essentially as accurate as the best. And it's significantly smaller. Therefore, we can feel good about deploying this model. Validation accuracy may not accurately reflect performance after such extensive iteration on the models. Therefore, as final step before deployment, we measure accuracy on the test set that we held out at the beginning of the session by clicking Test All. With this demo, we showed that you do not have to toggle anymore between command line and learner apps to apply advanced techniques. 
we took features extracted from the Diagnostic Feature Designer. Then we partitioned data three ways and we built a couple models. We saved the session, realized we needed to make the model smaller, we resumed the session to select features. The machine learning apps now support also feature selection, evaluating models on held out data and later resuming a session to name the top recent three enhancements. You can find this demo in the statistics and machine learning application section of the documentation page of the statistics and machine learning toolbox. Scroll down to the section for the industrial automation and machinery industry and click on the build condition model for industrial machinery and manufacturing processes demo. And that's going to walk you through the steps I've just shown to you. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and learning more about how you can build machine learning models in a no-code workflow in MATLAB. Thank you for your attention.